Hello viewers, welcome to the section Inter-Process Communication. In this section we will learn about mutex, deadlock and conditional variable. Now we move on to the video mutex. In this video we will refractor the thread procedure function and synchronize the critical section that modifies and accesses the balance. We need a locking mechanism that will only allow one thread to either read or write the balance. The C++ thread support library offers an apt lock called mutex. The mutex lock is an exclusive lock that will allow only one thread to operate the critical section code within the same process boundary. Until the thread that has acquired the lock releases the mutex lock, all other threads will have to wait for their turn. Once a thread acquires the mutex lock, the thread can safely access the shared resource. Open the Atom Editor and here you can see we are using the same code example of EX1. The account.h remains the same and the code for account.cpp also remains the same. We have only modified the main.cpp file where we have used mutex concept. Let's see what we have refactored in this main.cpp file. As you can see we first added a header for mutex. In line number 30 we declared a mutex object called locker. You may have noticed that the mutex is declared in the global scope. Ideally, we could have declared the mutex inside a class as a static member as opposed to a global variable. As all the threads are supposed to be synchronized by the same mutex, ensure that you use either a global mutex lock or a static mutex lock as a class member. The refactored thread procedure in main.cpp source file looks like this. We have refactored the thread procedure function and synchronized the critical section that modifies and accesses the balance. The code that is wrapped between lock and unlock is the critical section that is synchronized by the mutex lock. As you can see there are two critical section blocks in the thread procedure function. One is the case depositor and another one is the case withdrawer. So it is important to understand that only one thread can enter the critical section. For instance if the depositor thread has entered its critical section then the withdrawal thread must wait until the depositor thread releases the lock and vice versa. It is time to check the output of our refactored program. Let's go to our terminal to compile and check the program. Type g++ with the file name that is account.cpp and main.cpp. We have successfully compiled our program. Now execute the program by using the dot slash account. Great! Did you check the balance reported by depositor and withdrawer threads? Yep, they are always consistent, aren't they? Yes, the output confirms that the code is synchronized and it is thread safe now. Though our code is functionally correct, there is room for improvement. Let's refactor the code to make it object oriented and efficient. Go back to our Atom Editor and click on the EX2 folder. Close all the EX1 files. Open the account.h from the ex2 folder. To start with, let's observe the refactored account.h header. As you can see, the account.h header hasn't changed as it already looks clean. Next, look at the account.cpp source file. It is better if the account class is separated from the thread related functionalities to keep things neat. As you can see, the account.cpp hasn't changed. Let's understand how the thread class that we wrote could be refactored to use the mutex synchronization mechanism. Click on the thread.h file. Let's reuse the thread class and abstract all the thread related stuff inside the thread class and get rid of the global variables and thread procedure. In the thread.h header file, a couple of changes are done as part of refactoring. As we would like to synchronize the threads using a mutex, the thread class includes the mutex header of the C++ thread support library. As all the threads are supposed to use the same mutex lock, the mutex instance is declared static. Since all the threads are going to share the same account object, the thread class has a pointer to the account object as opposed to a stack object. The run method is the thread function that we are going to supply to the thread class constructor of the C++ thread support library. As no one is expected to invoke the run method directly, the run method is declared private. As per our thread class design, 
which is similar to Java and Qt, the client code would just invoke the start method. When the OS scheduler gives a green signal to run, the run thread procedure will be called automatically. Actually, there is no magic here, since the run method address is registered as a thread function at the time of creating the thread. Now open the thread.cpp file. The thread.cpp source can be refactored like this. In this void thread run method, the thread procedure function that was there in main.cpp has moved inside the thread class's run method. After all, the main function or the main.cpp source file isn't supposed to have any kind of business logic, hence they are refactored to improve the code quality. The code inside the run method is the same that we had in the thread procedure function. Now let's see how clean is the main.cpp source file after refactoring. Open the main.cpp file. The overall main.cpp source file looks short and simple without any nasty complex business logic hanging around. Let's compile and run our program. Go to the terminal and clear this screen using the reset command. Navigate to our ex2 directory and clear this screen. Type G++ with the file names that are thread.cpp, account.cpp and main.cpp file. This command helps you to compile the refactored program. Brilliant! If all goes well, the program should compile smoothly without making any noise. As you can see, we have successfully compiled our program. Let's run the program using the dot slash account command. Just take a quick look at the output before we move on to the next topic. Here, you can see in the depositor the current balance is 5,000 and the account balance after deposit is 7,000. In withdrawer, the current balance is 7,000 and the account balance after withdrawing is 6,000. Great, it works fine. The depositor and withdrawer thread seem to work cooperatively without messing up the balance and print statements. After all, we have refactored the code to make the code cleaner without modifying the functionality. In this video, we learned about mutex.